Hello everyone, please welcome us from Sparkles College with a new lecture for you that says Evolving Pakistan-Sri Lanka Relations, a Game Changer in South Asia. Alright, so right now we're discussing about two countries of South Asia, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. We have been discussing this course as well along with business ethics that we were studying initially. So along with other courses that we're doing simultaneously, we're also doing a course where we're we're talking about Pakistan and Sri Lanka. We're talking about, you know, the downfall of Sri Lanka. We're talking about how Pakistan is on the same track as Sri Lanka on the downfall. But what are some of the factors and resources that is going to protect Pakistan, uh, you know, in against Sri Lanka? So the thing is that Pakistan is going to be protected. Uh, and, you know, some of the things that Sri Lanka doesn't have, Pakistan has them. So that's the reason that we say that our com country, the one that is called Pakistan for instance is secured is safe right because it's not gonna have those uh, same situations and same you can say downfalls like Sri Lanka because we mentioned we are NATO power right we have support from other company uh, countries we have a lot of re you know renewable resources we are rich in minerals a lot of factors that we discussed in the last class so now we're gonna see that how Pakistan and Sri Lanka's relationships uh, are in evolving and how is it a game changer in South Asia, right? If they are going to have good relations with each other, how can they benefit each other with that? And how can, you know, South Asia, right, can be benefited all together? Alright, let's move on. Right, history of Pakistan-Sri Lanka relations. I would like to do this with you first of all. So we're going to see some, some factors and some points regarding the history of Pakistan and Sri Lanka's relationships. You can see this flag. This looks a very cute one because we have partition written Pakistan flag and Sri Lanka's flag, right? So historically, it joined a conflict-free and relatively stable relationship. So previously, it had a conflict-free, uh, you know, relationship. There were no fights and it was a very stable relationship. It was not instable have cultural affiliations and diplomatic operation multilateral forums so cultural affiliations are there if you see Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka there are you know some of the similarities with Pakistan as in their cultures and diplomatic cooperation there was some cooperation in multilateral forums economic and defense partnership have further bolstered the relations so first of all these was this was it that it was a stable kind of a relationship but with the passage of time you know economic and defense partnerships were also built that you know economic dependence on each other supporting them and supporting each other in times of needs and securing the defense for each other providing security supplies all these things they further boosted the relationships between pakistan and sri lanka free trade agreement is the backbone of the relationship so there was a free trade agreement that was signed between pakistan and sri lanka which said that you know uh, the trade between pakistan and sri lanka will be free and you know the, both the countries can reap benefits of each other's exports so basically we used to import the stuff from sri lanka which was sri lanka's exports and they were benefiting from it because there were some of the things that we didn't have or you know we didn't have that industry or it was very uh, you know um, not of good quality over here so we used to import it and we used to see that you know it's um, it's cheaper for us because we don't have to pay any tariffs or there are no quotas there or no any tax kind of tax there so that was what free trade agreement was helping us with similarly for sri lanka it was helping sri lanka as well with the same thing ensure the effective implementation of planned agreements to further expand relations so effective implementation there was effective implementation of planned agreements uh, to further expand relations that when they used to have some treaties like free trade agreement or other implementations of uh, other plans that they used to make um, you know in agreement with each other that okay we're gonna support you you support us we're gonna give you this or that you're gonna give us this and that so they used to make sure that they abide by those rules and regulations they abide by those planned agreements all right and they used to make sure that there's effective implementation or whatever they have decided in the uh with to like together whatever they have decided they used to make sure that this they stick to those plans they used to make sure that they're not uh you know um doing anything wrong against each other or you know stuff like that so that was the way one can ensure that okay you know the relationships are well 
So that was the case with Pakistan and Sri Lanka. That is actually the case with Pakistan and Sri Lanka. All right, in Pakistan Sri Lanka relations, we discussed a historic, ba- just a background of how the relationships look like. Now let's move on to, um, you know, how Pakistan and Sri Lanka's relationships were developing. Let me just see how many slides we have so that I can accordingly do the lectures for you. All right, great. All right, so let's discuss the uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka relationships. Again, very important, very critical topic for us. And political relations, political official diplomatic ties in 1948. So in 1947, when Pakistan was, uh, you know, separated from India and the subcontinent was split apart. Now in 1948, there was there were official diplomatic ties between Sri Lanka and Pakistan. They came across. They recognized uh, Sri Lankans recognized Pakistan as a separate state because initially they used to all recognize what they used to recognize. I'll just give you like a 30 seconds of silence to see what comes in your mind. What do they used to recognize before? Was it Pakistan? Was it any India? Or was it? So I believe that was subcontinent. Right? So they shared cordial diplomatic relationships. And, you know, they used to help each other, be nice to each other, recognize each other, provide all sorts of support. Mutual diplomatic assistance was there. So, it used to make sure that they're assisting each other whenever needed during the testing times. Again, very important concept that I've already told you. That, you know, uh, mutual relationships are of critical importance. You need to make sure that you're having some great relationships with each other. And you need to also make sure that you're not doing something that is going to go against one another so this was again a very important thing moving on Sri Lanka played an important role in Pakistan's restoration to the Commonwealth in 1989 now many of you would be thinking what is Commonwealth right so Commonwealth of Nations uh, simply referred to as the Commonwealth is a political association of 56 member states, uh, the vast majority of which are former territories of British Empire. So, uh, basically, Pakistan it helped Pakistan's re- restoration to the Commonwealth in 1989 because after subcontinent was uh, fell apart, there were problems, and that was the reason. Yet that this voluntary association of 50, 56 independent and equal countries, you know, it it was home to 2.5 billion people. And it includes both both advanced economies or developing economies, right? All the member countries are there. So Pakistan also got the was restored to the Commonwealth in 1989, and Sri Lanka helped them. They recognized them. Colombo was vocal in Pakistan's protest against Soviet military intervention. So Colombo, all right, Colombo was vocal in Pakistan's protest. They they said that you know uh, we are vocal about it. And we are not going to let it be like that. So that was the reason that, you know, uh, Colombo, they supported. And they said that, okay, we're standing with Pakistan. And Colombo is basically the largest city of Sri Lanka by population. If anyone doesn't know, I'm just mentioning it. So they went vocal and they said that Pakistan's, they asked for Pakistan's protection against Soviet military intervention. Those of you who are thinking what Soviet military intervention is, that is Russians in military intervention. Why I'm telling you all of these terms is because I need to make sure that you people understand fully what we are doing. I don't want you to be like that, you know, you're not understanding these concepts or you're just making, uh, you know, trying to understand them. Just make sure that you are getting all of these things fully and just make sure that you have a great idea of what's going on. And you should know about every term, as I always mention that you just write the uh, comments in the comment section just let me know if any there if any term is not clear that i missed out or anything that is not clear to you any questions any suggestions just feel free to give us and uh while i am at it kindly please subscribe the channel as well for all those viewers hit the bell icon so that you know um you're gonna get the videos latest updates and latest videos with it
and please just share the page like and subscribe and share it with your friends and family members so that they can also get benefits from these free lectures all right moving on we have okay first we have discussed the political relations i think it's pretty much clear now moving on let's go to the military uh, relations again a very important point can you see this picture that's so cutely made showing the military one what was on the last page yeah so this was political divided on the basis of like political grounds and maps and everything and now this is military showing you the military uh you know symbol basically so mutual support for defense in the military goes back to 1971 in 1971 uh in the war against bangladesh as well sorry not in the war i mean when the bangladesh got separated and all there was chaos and there was tension that was going on there right so there was sort of war going on so there was transit and refueling facilities to pakistani planes during the pakistan bangladesh war so there were transit was provided refueling facilities were provided to the aircrafts right mutual support was there for defense and the military that goes back to 1977 so it started from there it's not a, a recent thing or something that you were not aware of but you should know that this was something provided to pakistan uh with full help support and this was something which was very important to pakistan moving on i'll just like to reiterate on this point transit and refueling facilities so when you're talking about transit many people they might get confused that what a transit is i want you to take one minute and see and just you know maybe think of it that what the transit would look like in in you know wars connection so transit basically means the interconnections that delivers traffic from the point of interconnections or one telecommunication network so the tech the network and you know the departments of transportation and all these things they were basically called the transit system so the, it depends on the needs of their community departments of transportation private providers can organize modes of transportation into a transit system so that's how it is then pakistan's arm exports to sri lanka to be us 4 million now why did pakistan give arms to sri lanka obviously they did it to secure their military background right they wanted to wanted sri lanka to have strong military uh, military you can say um, aspect or department or uh, their stake sever high and they just pakistan made sure that they are providing them with support like they did in 1971 right so pakistan's arms exports to sri lanka to be us 4 billion 4 million was this was the amount and at that time this amount was huge right very huge even this right now it is but let me just tell you that it's you know very very uh, crucial to understand and to acknowledge that you know uh, the us 4 million was something great it's not like uh, you know you're not going to understand or something like that All right. Then we have Pakistan support was vital to defeat the LTTE in Sri Lanka. Now many of you might be confused about what LTTE is. So the liberal the LTTE basically stands for Liberation Tigers of Tamil Nadu, uh, also known as the Tamil Tigers. They were separatist group in Sri Lanka and since the 1980s the LTTE have been agitated for a homeland for ethnic Tamils who feel prosecuted by Sri Lanka's ethnic majority. the sehales so the thing is that uh, you know sri lanka has a majority of people who were sehales and they were not tamil the so tamil people were uh, there was a you know minority tamil in uh, sri lanka and so this was the ltte movement where they wanted to be recognized where they wanted to be uh, you know have a separate homeland for ethnic tamils and they used to feel prosecuted by sri lankans that's why they made this liberation tigers of tamil ila all right liberation tigers of tamil elam pakistan also provides military training facilities for sri lanka's military personnel so the we know that pakistan is very strong in terms of its military as well so pakistan used to provide military training so it still does so they provide pakistan provides military training facilities for sri lanka's military personnel that if all those teams if they were not to you can say um you know very well uh knowing how the military would look like and how what crucial steps should be taken how the military could be made strong so pakistan used to make sure that they provide military training facilities for these sri lankans so that they can uh you know 
get uh, benefit from this. Alright. Alright, I hope this is clear. So, so far we have done political relationships and military relationships.